So I'm going to explain a little bit today with our muskrat hunting. Um, in the spring, right around like the end of February or so, muskrats start breeding and um, when they do that, uh, they become aggressive towards each other. So in the winter, some of the young from the summer will sometimes stay with their parents or in the general vicinity of their parents. Um, in the fall especially, you'll see them actually living in the same den as their parents still. And then as winter progresses, they kind of move, branch out, but they still stay in their parents' territories. Well, come spring, that, you know, little family unity totally breaks up and they start fighting with each other and killing each other. If they don't move, they'll get killed by their own parents or, uh, or they have to kill their own parents or their own, uh, you know, other neighbors to take over a territory. So muskrats, will, you can find them in some really weird places, even the middle of dry open fields. Why they're there, they're looking for a new place to live. Because if they don't, they're going to get killed by another muskrat. If you look here, this really isn't ideal muskrat habitat. This is a drained canal. They just have this little puddle basically to live in. Normally, I wouldn't expect to find muskrat here. But as I was driving by on the bridge up there, I, I drove by and I looked down and I saw this hole. And I saw a few things. I mean, old muskrat holes in a dried canal, that's normal. They're everywhere. But I saw a few cues that gave me that maybe there's a muskrat here. If you notice, look up there, that's the den entrance for back when the water was high. But muskrats don't like above ground or above water entrances. They feel vulnerable. So as the water drops, they dig these lower entrances and exits so they can continue to stay in the water and be able to go into their hole and flee from their hole without leaving the water. That's what makes them comfortable. Um, so they've made these lower water exits. I saw them from the road and was like, huh, I wonder if there's a muskrat in there. That's a really dumb place for a muskrat to be. So I jumped out and came and looked at it and I felt around down here. Lo and behold, there's a little trench right here. If you see, right here it's shallow, here it's deep. The muskrats have dug a trench so they have an underwater exit or a water exit and entrance to their den. That said, hey, there might be a muskrat here. As you guys saw in the last video, we had him in getting a muskrat that was in a really, really bad area for muskrats because muskrats like open, deep water where they can hide from predators. Um, you remember the last muskrat um, video was of a muskrat in a little creek where the muskrat was obviously very vulnerable. might have one cornered. He's acting funny. Either that or he's just scared to go into the water. I don't know. I hear stuff. Yeah. He might have one. Here it comes. See? It's coming out. That's it. And the other one. He lost them both. So they're both out and they're, they're hiding right in the mud here. And he's trying to get back in his den. So he's back in the den. Watch you shit! Here, 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 here! <whistles> Not me! Look at the muskrat, you dork! Don't move, buddy. Just sit still. Watch you shit, Caesar. Nervous. He's pretty nervous. You gotta get him, buddy. He can't help you. Yeah. 
He's an aggressive sucker, though. Wow, the water's even shallower than I thought. I should probably step back. Don't go inside, I think. Oh, good. He knows he can't take him out in the water. He's back in the den now. No. I see bubbles. Yeah. Look at that. He's right at your feet. Here, 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 He's got it. Good job, Wanshushe. Good job, buddy. Can someone bring the box? Quickly. Quickly, somebody. Thank you, whoever that is. <laughs> Good boy, Wanshushe. Good boy. He was pretty nervous on this one because of the. He got bit last time. Good job, buddy. Good job. Good job. Oh, wow, did you hear that? If not, we'll come back with your mink. Oh, good point. Yeah, yeah, good point. Hurry, sweetheart. Oh, she got caught in the mud again. Oh, it's because her boots are big. Good job, boy. Good boy, wash your shake. Good boy. If you guys get the misconception that mink are this like invincible fearless creature when in reality they're a lot more careful uh, than, than you may realize if you watch the videos it looks like they're fearlessly going after the muskrat really they're actually calculating and weighing their the dangers and the risks and trying to be careful about it they just do it so quickly that it looks like it's a blatant fearless attack like a pit bull or a a working bred terrier just jumping in and grabbing stuff. Mink are not like that at all. In all reality, they're very calculated in their attacks when they attack and if they attack. They're cautious in a very brazen way, but they're still cautious and they're still careful as they should be. The reason they're like that is if they're not, they'll die. I mean, in nature, being injured could end your life. It's not like in captivity where it's like, oh, let me give you some medicine and live you a couple days off to rest and you'll be fine. No, in the wild, you don't get the day to rest. You gotta go hunting the next day and catch something else to eat. If you get an infection, you don't have the advantages of antibiotics or even just simple antiseptic ointment, nothing like that. So an animal in nature needs to be very careful. Uh, mink especially because they're a small predator. Smaller predators like mink need to be extra careful and extra calculated in their attacks. When, say, a weasel attacks a brown rat, it's a pretty big risk. The brown rat oftentimes outweighs the weasel. Same with mink and muskrat. 
sometimes the mink's bigger, but other times the muskrat's actually bigger than the, than the mink, and they really need to be very careful. If they get bit by those big old teeth, even if the wound isn't fatal, it could lead to infection, which could be fatal. So I just wanted to show this video to, to show that, you know, mink really aren't as brazen as we think they are. They're really quite careful. In this video, you can see that Washushe, he's one of the bravest mink I've seen. He's very careful, very cautious in his attack, when he attacks, how he attacks. Washushe is really not sure of himself because he's not very experienced. The last muskrat he caught, he actually caught a pretty good bite on his back. Now, the bite didn't break the skin, it just pulled some fur off, but I'm sure it hurt and probably left a bit of a bruise under his skin. So he's learned, ooh, I gotta be careful. You know, these things do bite. How do I grab them without getting hurt? And you'll see in this video that he really is careful. He's a little too careful, but it's part of the learning process. Now in my book, I explain in a lot of detail how to help build a mink's confidence and how to bring them to the point where they can confidently hunt a, an animal without getting hurt. And so I'm not gonna go into that detail here in this video, but if you wanna learn more about how to actually train a mink and build up their confidence so that they can hunt large aggressive prey like muskrats, you need to read my book.